fast that you know getting married is a big adjustment and for her who was a private citizen up until about two weeks ago it's even more so. George's graphics will grab you and its writing will hold you. Politics isn't dry. It isn't dull. So why should a magazine that covers it be? In fact, George just doesn't cover politics. It celebrates it. We will celebrate it. Celebrate it as a general rule, but we won't be afraid to criticize it when necessary. I thought you were a lawyer. I was. What happened? Well, we, uh... We decided, I mean, actually taking a cue from, from folks like yourself and you around the 1992 election that, that there was an opportunity here to uh, change the definition of a political magazine. Uh, certainly the way Americans were uh, accessing information about politics and politicians was changing. Uh, candidates were appearing on late night talk shows, on talk radio, on sitcoms, uh, and there was a, a kind of a leveling process. And while while the rest of media clearly had caught up with that, we felt that political magazines, per se, hadn't. Your mother was an editor at Doubleday. Would she have liked George? I think she would have. Because? I, mean, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, she, when we first talked about the idea, she said, well, John, you're not going to do the mad magazine of politics. <laughs> and and I, I said, well, no. And I thought that was good advice to keep in the back of my mind. A direction we wanted to go, which, uh, but I think that she would have appreciated the fact that people had always said that you can't do a fun magazine about politics that combines the serious as well as the playful, which is about personalities, because that's what public life is about. And in the sense that we, I think, have flouted a lot of conventional wisdom, I think that that would have appealed to her. Because she had that, she had a good yeah. sense of humor, right? She had a good sense of humor, and I don't think she was a slave to conventional wisdom. And uh, and I think that that there's a certain irony in the whole enterprise and, and I think she would have appreciated it. Uh, she would have said this is a cute idea, right? I think something more than cute. I mean, <laughs> it, it works. Yeah, it works. And it's, it's, I mean, you know, for me personally, it's an interesting uh, opportunity and, and, and one that probably is, is a, uh, a way of engaging some of the issues that are unique to my life and, and doing it in a little bit different way. Sister like it? Yeah, but with she's reservation. No, no, no. She does like it. She does like it. She's um. I mean, she's about to come out with a book soon. Another so, one. Uh, yeah, a, a oh, book on privacy, so. which actually she's very well suited to write about. She's uh, writing a book on privacy, mm -hmm. on the right to privacy. Has privacy been the toughest thing for me? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, mean you go out, people follow you, right? I mean, you don't have a normal life. I have a pretty normal life, surprisingly. Uh, I mean, you know, every now and then sort of strange things happen. But, uh, I mean, up until the uh, cavalcade of publicity for George, I, you know, I was a private citizen. I, uh, you and, weren't and, easily and, recognized on the street? No, but people, I think, you're not, you're not in the business of really selling your personality. So I think people kind of understood that, that and, and, you know, sort of people would ask and stuff. People are generally nice, and it's not a... It's not a crazy situation. What's your earliest memory? What's your really early, what you can crystallize a memory? We had a, uh, we had a dog who was named Pushinka who was given to my father by uh, the premier of Russia, was it? Uh, Soviet Union at that time. And it was the daughter of, uh, was it? I don't think it was, I don't think it was, I mean, it, Khrushchev was the time, but I don't think it was actually from Khrushchev, All I right. think it was head of the parliament, and it was the daughter of the first dog in space, and, uh, and it, 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 we trained it to slide down this slide that we had in the back of, of the uh, White House, and, and that's, sliding the dog down the slide is probably my But story. probably, memories of your father are not great. Um, they're great, but they're not plentiful. No. Or of your Uncle Robert, right? They're more vivid of him. I mean, you were I, how old I was, when uh, he died? I was eight. So that's a vivid memory to you? Fairly, yeah. He was really? a very vivid character. He was a quite a forceful presence. Was he involved in raising you too? Yeah, at times. I mean, he uh, raising many of us. I mean, all uh, really in our, in our family. I mean, Teddy and Bobby really 
Um, I mean, one of the things that they really took a great interest in was was uh, the family and, and, and the cousins and, and making a, a kind of a, a, a sense of community, especially in the summertime. So, you know, I, I saw a good bit of Bobby. That still exists, that togetherness in the Kennedys? Yeah. It doesn't go of, away, right? No. It's one of the great lucky things about being in my family, which I'm, which has stayed. That know. gathering concept, yeah. right? Yeah. It is familial. Mm -hmm. Right. This it is. It's a touching family too, right? Very I mean, much so. the, the boys get along. It's a mm -hmm. each uh, go for each other kind of family. Absolutely. Right? Did that start? It must start with your grandfather. I mean, I I, I had heard. I mean, he he, uh, you know, certainly took a, a great interest in his, and I think he created that that sort of environment and that that ethos within the family, and and it and it passed on. Now, when you when you look at him, John, you look at your father, and you must see him all the time. I mean, you see him. We see him everywhere. We see him. In, tapes and visions and on cameras and in democratic conventions, he's everywhere. You didn't know him, know him, right? How do you look at him? Is he my father, a president, a great man, my family? How do, what's the association? I think it's complicated, and I think that you see it in, in, in a variety of, uh, of ways. I mean, I understand that my father is part of the mythology of, of this country, and he was also a, uh, a very compelling political figure and I think um, you know you can certainly certainly he was aware himself of the opportunities for politics to be both fun and serious and that's one of the things that we've tried to that mix I mean if there is you know bits and pieces of family history which go into, into creating something you know on my end that's part of it. One of your father's great friends told me once in an interview that he believed when your, fa if your father filled out two terms, he would have probably purchased or been involved with the Boston Globe. Mm. He would have traveled and written and gotten into magazines. He would have been in the reporting end. Did that right. surprise you? No, I mean, I had heard that also. And, uh, and it would have probably been a, uh, a very helpful... Uh, uh, he would have been a contributing... Contributing editor. <laughs> editor. <laughs> the gray eminence. Um, <laughs> He'd be how old but, he, well, he was born in 1917, so my math is a little bad. Mine is too, so it's... 78 or 7. I can't picture him that way. And the obvious, your own interest in politics. You write about it, mm. you're raised in a family that lives off it, mm -hmm. and on it, mm -hmm. and through it, and with it. Mm. What about you? Well, I, obviously, you know, I, I, as I said, I grew up in a family where we were saturated with politics, and I have, I've lost count, five or so relatives in politics now. Um, I like not being in politics. I like the proximity to it that a magazine like this affords me. I grew up obviously in a family that valued public service, and but at the same time, I think it's important that, that uh, I think he would have wanted both his children to live their own lives and not try to mimic for the sake of public expectation uh, his life. You know, I have interests and I have sentiments and I have, uh, you know, that, that were passed on from him that I try to uh, integrate into my life. And, uh, but at the same time, try to do it, uh, try to live a life that's reflective of, of my life and not somebody else's. Mm -hmm.